Rise and shine, it's Espresso time. Good morning, Believe Nation, it's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I wanna see explode out onto the world. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee and sip on today's message. Ignore the critics. Over to you, Elon Musk. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. There are people who've been in the rocketry business for decades yeah. who say about you that you don't know what you don't know. Well, I, I suppose that's true of anyone. How can anyone know what they don't know? <laughs> but when um, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is... We've done it. He's done it in partnership with NASA, which has given SpaceX technical advice and a contract worth up to $1.6 billion, mostly for 12 cargo flights to the space station. But SpaceX's lack of experience bothers some NASA legends, like Apollo astronauts Neil Armstrong and Gene Cernan. They've testified to Congress that the Obama administration's drive to commercialize space could compromise safety and eventually cost the taxpayers. Now is the time to overrule this administration's pledge to mediocrity. You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight in the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that um, because those guys are, yeah. You know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in, in space flight and, and, and help make space flight accessible to, to almost anyone. I would uh, hope for as much support in that direction as we, as we can receive. If you're doing something new, then people are going to criticize you. That's just the game. There's so many people who love the way that things are currently being done. There's so many people whose careers, whose lives are attached to the status quo. And as soon as you come in and propose a new way of doing something, say, I'm gonna break the mold on this, you're gonna have a lot of people who naturally are just against that. Because it, it's part of their identity. They like the old way of doing things. They don't wanna see you be successful in a new way. That's part of every entrepreneurial venture. Every entrepreneur who stepped out and said, I'm gonna go off and do something crazy and different, had a ton of people who criticized them. And sometimes the, the criticism comes from people that you love. It might be your mom, it might be your dad, it might be your, your brother, sister, friends. And a lot of that is out of love because they see success as this one path. Maybe your mom had success by being a doctor and so she sees success as being a doctor and that's what she wants for you. And you going off and doing this crazy unproven thing seems risky. And so her negativity towards you is based off of just how she sees success and it comes from a place of loving. Now, it doesn't mean you're gonna to listen to that. You don't wanna be a doctor like her, you wanna do your own path, but understanding that it comes from a source of love. There'll be a lot of people though, who don't come from a place of love, right? Who just wanna tear you down. I call them the little man. It's the person who points out all the holes in your dreams, all the problems in your plan, and tell you that you're not good enough and you're never gonna make it. A lot of times it's because they took their shot, they tried to do something and it didn't work out. And so now nobody around them can be successful or because they have a lot invested in the status quo and they don't want to think outside the box. They don't want to go to this new idea. And so understand that a lot of times the critics, the negative, the negative people around you, they may not understand the industry, but sometimes they do. Sometimes they're the experts in your industry. The concept of Little Man came from when I made a video on my channel. It was a six and a half minute long video and I showed it to somebody who was in the industry and he said, no video on YouTube should be six and a half minutes long. It should only be two to three minutes. You don't understand the internet. You don't understand how things are going. This video is wrong. And a younger, less confident version of myself might have accepted that and made changes to it. But I looked at the video and I said, you know what, this guy may be right, but I like this video, you know, it moved me. 
Now, most of my videos are 10 plus minutes long, but this one was six and a half minutes, and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna post it. And if it fails, then fine. It's my failure. I'll own that loss. But if I don't post it because of his opinion, that's a big problem. Then I could live with that regret for the rest of my life. And so I posted it, and it quickly became the best video on my channel. We had 100,000 views in the first month. It was my first video to a million views, and now it's two million plus views on the channel. If I listened to the expert, I wouldn't have made that video. And that's part of what we do as entrepreneurs. You wanna use expert opinions and the people around you as, as a counselor, but not a jailer. Where so many times somebody else's opinion prevents you from doing the thing that you wanna do. If it feels right, if it feels like you just need to know, like sometimes it's just, I might mess up, I might make the biggest mistake in the world, but I just need to know for myself. I don't wanna live with the regret for the rest of my life. And just do it. Expect the haters, expect the little man, expect the criticism. If you have no little man in your life, then you're not doing anything big enough. Now I've got a special bonus clip for you, but before getting to it, my question of the day is, who is the biggest little man or hater or critic in your life? Who is that? Leave it in the comments below. I'm really curious to find out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. I'll see you again tomorrow morning for another shot of Espresso and enjoy the bonus. Being a child star, as they call it, or, or having worked as a minor, um, you, do, you do sort of have to be aware of the, of the kind of trajectory and also kind of aware that, that people are viewing your performances through a very different lens. It's, I saw a really interesting article yesterday that, you know, People had seen the trailer and they're like, oh, you know, Emma Watson, like scandalous, like really trying to push the push the envelope and step away from Hermione and Harry Potter and whatever else. And it's like, oh, I'm just kissing someone, you know, and it's kind of like this huge deal. And it's so, you know, you're aware of that, but you also, I don't like to try and let all of that noise affect my choices and my decisions because ultimately, if you live like that, then you, you know, I think it would, it would close me off to a lot of opportunities and, and experiences. The New York Post has declared a bit of a print jihad against Quentin Tarantino. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, is that a, is that a, is that concern you at all? Is that a badge of honor? Oh, I don't care about the New York Post. I mean, they can say whatever they, uh, yeah, but they've made it, they, they've made it pretty clear where they're coming from. It is, yes. All right, you know, so I, they can say, they can say whatever they want. And like I said, long as I don't Google my name, then it's just, you're mentioning it right now and I can slough it off. Right. If I make myself read every single article, then I'll get heart sick. What do you think of detractors that attempt to claim your sound is too mainstream? Um, I mean, everyone has their, has their own music taste. I don't know, I haven't changed my sound a bit from when I started to now in order to please the mainstream. I've always been doing the music I'm doing now. Uh, I've always stayed true to myself and you know, like the music has become more popular and, you know, the mainstream has opened up to a lot of more instrumental tracks and stuff like that. And I've always been interested in doing these kind of like really melodic, uplifting tracks. So I, you know, when I, I just kind of laugh when I see people, you know, you know, telling me I've sold out or something like that because I, I haven't changed anything, you know. So I was wondering, do you find it bothersome at all when people say things like that? Because as you said, you've been creating the same sound for a very long time. So you haven't changed. The only thing that has changed is more people have discovered you. So does it feel weird to have people essentially hating on your success? Yeah, I mean, it's, in the beginning it bothered me because you're like, oh yeah, I want to tell this person that it's not like that. You know, like, are you, you know, are kind of like, are you stupid? Just look at, you know, my music then or look at my music now. But then, you know, there, I just kind of know this, the better things go, like everyone said, the more haters you get, like by default. And I mean, you can't say it to everyone. And I mean, it doesn't really matter anyway. So right now I just kind of like brush it off and don't really care that much. But obviously it's, it's, it's an annoying thing, but it's just something you have to overlook.